that doesn't mean that I am not strong. Uh, I am quiet, so because and I think a lot, I observe a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Jean, uh, for that description about me. <laughs> I never expected from you. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Anyway, good morning, all of you. Uh, it's a huge privilege for me to stand here to uh, talk or to share to you something what uh, I have gone through or something. You know, many times the things which I share on this pulpit are things which I personally go through and how I overcome it. So today also is one of those uh, times I'm going to share one of the things which I usually previously have gone through, but now I overcome. So before that, let me just, uh, we just let us all just pray and commit this message into the hands of God. Lord, do you want to thank you, Father Lord, Heavenly Father Lord. We thank you, Lord, you have put me in this place, Father Lord, so that I may talk to your people, Father Lord. I may speak or share my heart to your people, Father Lord. We thank you, Father Lord. Holy Spirit, we pray to you that you be here. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Holy Spirit, we pray that you manifest in the hearts of people this morning in a very, very special way. I knew that there are many people who are in need of something this morning, Father Lord. Holy Spirit, we pray that you manifest in those people that let them take back something an answer for their question, Father Lord. We commit this message into your precious hands. We commit each and every one here in your precious hands. Be with us, Father Lord. Be in this sanctuary. Saturate this place, Father Lord. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you. The topic of my sharing this morning is uh, why we run away from problems. Running away from problems. I had a chance to talk to one of my uh, previous colleagues who, who left IMU already. She resigned already. So I had a chance to talk to her. So why exactly you left IMU? So this is exactly what she told me. She told me that I couldn't get along with my boss. That's why I had to leave or I had to resign my post or lectureship from this particular university. I couldn't get along. So actually, it caught me pondering because what exactly she was doing is running away from a situation, running away from a reality. We do a lot run away from situations. I, I ran away a lot from situations. That's why I'm sharing this here this morning. I was a person who used to, who can't face reality. I always evaded reality. Even now, even today, I actually face a lot of Situations where, which compel me to run away, but with the grace of God, I still hold on to the situation. So what we are doing, basically, when we face, a, 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 say, a storm or a trial, our first in instinct is to, say, run away from the situation. Sometimes when you go across, when we see person, a person coming towards you, it happens to me also, some of my students, Previously, I would have scolded them somewhere for something. So when they come across me, the moment they see me, they want to get away from me. They, they can't face the reality. Because why? There is some bitterness in the heart, which has happened previously. So people are running away from situations. So I was some, someone like that who is running. Even today, I'm actually a deputy head of my department. There are situations where I feel, I wish I could run away. You need to face your boss. You need to face the board. They are going to fire you with questions. I just wish, no, I don't want to be in that place. I don't have answers to answer them. But just I pray. I pray and just go. And God's grace was always there. Because when you depend on God, the grace will chase you. It will never let you down. Having said that, so the scripture portion which I chose today for this sharing is not a very familiar portion. It's from the book of Ruth. Ruth chapter 1 from verses starting 1 until 14. I'm going to read it for you all. Ruth chapter 1 verse 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. And a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. 
the man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Melon and Kilion. They were Ephratites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpha and the other Ruth. After they had lived about there about 10 years, both Melon and Kilion also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, Naomi and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to your dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. At this, they wept again. Then Orpha kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. So having read this scripture portion, we see here two characters here, which I'm focusing here. One is Elimelech, another one is Ruth. These are the two characters who I'm going to focus here. How am I going to share is one, the, what, the first character, Elimelech, ran away from a problem, and there was a famine. The second character, Ruth, even though there was a problem, there was a big crisis. Her husband died, but still she didn't run away to her, to back to her home. But she clung on to the situation. So these are the, the two characters who I'm going to share. Two examples, just two examples. Hopefully I have enough time. I don't, usually I don't talk a lot, so they try to finish as quick as possible. The first part, okay, <clears throat> Ruth chapter 1 verse 1 says that in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. Now what we see here is that during the days of judges, it was not a good period for Israel. It was not really a good period for Israel in terms that there were, not, there were no kings actually during the period of judges. There were no kings. And it was recorded as one of the lowest point in the history of Israel when the judges ruled Israel. Why? Because there were no kings. And if you read the scripture, you will know that during the period of judges, people did what they thought was correct. It was one of the lowest part of the history of Israel, the period where the judges ruled Israel. There were a lot of divisions, a lot of remorse, there were a lot of affliction, national disgrace. This was the period when we see this particular story happening here. So it was a really bad time for Israel. So that was when a person by the name Elimelech, we don't hear much often about this particular person. So what he did, there was a famine there. We see that Israel was going through a famine, Judah. If you refer back to scriptures, we, we see many a times God sent famines to show discipline, to show the kind of discipline God wants. Now here we see there's a famine here. 
If you refer the scriptures, there were many years before, say around 800 years back, there were, there were famines, but in between there were no famines. Only after that, this was the first famine after that. In the beginning, there were a lot of famines, especially in Genesis. We, we see that in Genesis, <clears throat> when there was a famine, Abraham ran over to Egypt. So there are a few references back in Genesis. We find that there were famines. But after that, we see in the book of Ruth, there was a famine. So when famine devastated Judah, Elimelech decided, okay, I need to go away from this place. I can't stay here with my family. I need to go away from this place because I can't take up the famine here. I don't have food here. So I want to go away from Judah. Just nearby there is another country by the name of, by the name of Moab. It's a very good country. I mean, this lush green, a lot of grain producing country. So I want to go there. So he decided to go to Moab, Elimelech, and his family. Now, why I'm mentioning here is that many times we do the same. Am I right? When you find a problem, we try to move away from the problem and go on to greener pastures. So as I mentioned to you, here was famine. And usually, if you see the scripture, God sends famine to discipline people. So this time, during the, during the reign of Judges, Israel repeatedly turned from God and worshipped the idols of heathen nations surrounding them. So God had to discipline them. And that's why we see that this famine was allowed by God. After this, we also see there was a famine during Elijah's period. During Elijah's period, there was a famine. So our point here is Elimelech. So he actually ran away from the, the current situation, like just what we do. Running away from the reality, evading reality. Running away from a difficult situation. Many of us do the same, like what I mentioned to you. Many of us do the same. I know many of my students do the same. Some even come and tell me, sir, I have helicopter parents. Have you heard about helicopter parents? Helicopter parents are there. They are called helicopter parents because they always hover around the kids, trying to control them. And it's pressurizing the kids. Then there are parents, you know, they call us uh, tiger mom. Have you heard about tiger mom? Now, these are actually, I'm not making up the words. They are standard words, which you can find in the literature. Tiger mom. All this makes us to run away from the reality. But my point here is that why you want to run away, you have to stay in that place. I'm going to give you some solid evidences why you have to stay in that place. Because the moment you decide to run away, you are missing the blessing. Because the plan of God is you be strong by going through that particular problem. So the moment you try to run away from the problem, you are missing the blessing. So that's, that's what I'm trying to get across here. So Elimelech made the wrong decision here by choosing to run away from the situation. Now, if you see the scripture, there are many others similar to Elimelech who, has, who have run away yeah. from the situation. For example, I can tell you the story of Hagar. Hagar was a slave in Abraham's house. Since Sarah couldn't conceive, Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham so that through them they can, there can be a, a baby. And Hagar conceived, but when Hagar conceived, Sarah got depressed. I mean, she didn't like it. And she started mistreating Hagar. And what Hagar did, she ran away. She ran away from the situation. She ran away from the problem. Similarly, Moses, in Exodus, we see in chapter 2, verses 15, we see that Moses ran away. Moses ran away and he fled to the land of Midian. Also seen Jonah. We see Jonah. God asked him to do something. But he ran away, running away from responsibilities. There are many examples I can quote where people ran away from the real situation or ran away from reality. So here, Elimelech ran away from the reality as well. Now, Elimelech did a very wrong decision, took a very wrong decision by running away. He looked into the physical part, not the spiritual part. We all need food to live. So Elimelech thought that way. I need food to survive. And my family needs food to survive. 
So the only way I can provide food is to run away from this famine and go into Moab. So that's why he ran away from his own country into Moab. Food is something very important. If you see in the Bible, when Jesus was tested in the wilderness, the first thing Satan tempted Jesus was with food. Can you, can you change the stones into food? So food is something which really catches or pulls, pulls us down. The third thing what Elimelech did was he honored the enemy. He didn't honor God. Why am I telling this? Because he went into Moab. Now Moab is a country which God disliked. If you see the history of Moab, Moabites, they are the descendants of Abraham's nephew, Lot. And Moabites, if you see the history, they, are, they come from an incestuous relationship between Lot and his first daughters. So that was the line of the Moabites and God disliked them. Moabites hated Israel. Moabites ruled Israel for a period of 18 years. And a lot of, a lot of such things happened through Moabites. So God actually disliked them. So here, when Elimelech ran to Moab, that means he was honoring the enemy. By the way, if you see the scriptures, God didn't tell, tell Elimelech, go to Moab. He didn't tell that. But it was his own personal decision, like how exactly we do. So he runs into this nation of Moab, which God didn't like. So that's why I say that he took a very wrong decision. Instead of just waiting there in Judah, waiting for the blessings of God, he just ran away. So what are the consequences because of this? If you read the scripture, Elimelech died. When he entered Moab, we read that. Elimelech died in, in verse 3. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband died. After what happened? After 10 years, his both sons also died. Melon and Kilon. Melon and Kilion. Both of them died after 10 years. So it was just a period of 10 years. The initial idea of Elimelech was to go there for a while, but he st just stayed there. So when he stayed there, he ran away from his problems. He came and stayed here. He died. Two of his sons died, leaving three widows and two Jewish graves. Three Jewish graves and three widows. Okay? So these were the consequences of taking a wrong decision or not staying put in the place where God wanted him to be. So just if we apply the same principle in our lives, Instead of running away from a problem, you might be going through a lot of problems. But if you choose to stay with a problem, you will really see God's blessing. I'm sharing from my own experience. So when I started running, I couldn't find anything. Because if you see the scriptures, people who ran away, they all ended up in wilderness of one or the other type. When you run away, you obviously will end up in wilderness. And you are missing God's blessing. God has a plan for our lives and we have to be there. And if we are not there, God cannot execute his plan. So always we end up in wilderness. You run away for a moment into our comfort zones. The comfort zone is a shortcut to wilderness. And Satan uses that comfort zone. We never know that. We think that there's a comfort zone. We run away from the problem. So, okay, everything is solved. But my, my request to you all is that please hold on to that, whatever you're going through. It might be a problem. You might think that's a problem. But always remember in, in your mind that this is allowed by God. Because always we read in the scripture that God has good plans for us. He already has a plan for you. So when you are going through a problem, do not run away from the problem. You just be there. Just wait for the grace of God. Because being there... First thing is, you are getting the blessing of God. Second thing is, it's actually, spiritually, you are renewed. You are becoming stronger, which God wants to.
So that was my first example of Elimelech running away from the problem. In contrast, my second example, who I'm going to, to share is Ruth. Ruth, on the other hand, as we see in the scripture, her husband died, and she has all the right to go back to her own home in Moab. But she did not go because she was already dedicated to this family because she married the son of Elimelech. So she is dedicated to the family. So she decided, no, I'm going to stay here. We see the history of Ruth. Now, Ruth is actually not a Jew. She is a Gentile woman. If you see the genealogy of Jesus, Ruth has a place in the genealogy of Jesus. That's the, the favor God has given her. She is there in the genealogy of Jesus. If you see the genealogy, there are five women there. Three of them are non-Jews or Gentiles. They are Tamar, Rahab, and Ruth. So Ruth is one of the Gentile in the genealogy of Jesus. So when you talk about Ruth, Ruth actually decided to step out of the comfort zone. Because she, like what I mentioned, she could have always gone back to her home. Her mother is there. The people whom she knows, she's, they're all there, but she didn't go. She didn't go because, because she just clung on to Naomi. And she had the blessings for that. And she, she was, or she found favor because of that, because that she didn't run away from the problem. The story of Ruth is a strong story of love, determination, devotion, and loyalty, and how she was blessed. We have a choice, just like how Ruth had. You can either choose to stay on with the problem, or you can choose to run away from the problem. It's up to us. God has a plan. He has allowed certain things. If we knew that, we will stay with the problem. We won't run away from the problem. So if you see the history of Ruth, after what happened was she went into Judah and she found favor with the, name, with the, with the man, the name of Boaz. And eventually Ruth married Boaz. And, and from them came out a son by the name Obed and then Jesse, and then came King David. That's the favor she found, even though she was a Gentile. So what it means is that irrespective of who you are, God still favors. If you are in the plan of God, if you stick to that, that principle of staying within that particular boundary without running away, God will surely bless you. We might be going through a lot of problems. I don't deny that. A lot of problems. We tend to run away. I don't deny that. But my only request is that you just stay put there and you will eventually see the blessings of God. I was a, I was a, I was a person who used to run away from a lot of problems. I can't face people. I don't like to face people because of some sort of uh, bitter experiences. But now I'm not like that. Because I know, because if you, if you don't go through that particular difficult path, you are not growing. You are stagnant. Spiritually, you are not growing. You are not going anywhere. So Ruth demonstrated how to stay within that, even though there is a problem, just be there. We have to decide, we have to learn how to invest our sufferings to him. All our sufferings, just we have to invest to him. And we always know that the will of God is always there with us. And you always know that the will of God will not take you to a place where the grace of God can't protect you. Sometimes we think that, you know, I am in the will of God when I have no problems. I don't have any problems, so oh, I know that I am in the will of God. I am according, I'm actually living according to the will of God. But that may not be true. It may not be true that if there's no problem, that you are living according to the will of God. I, I believe that your will of God always starts from the point where there is a problem. 
So that's why we have to learn to not to run away from problems. We have to stay put wherever there's a problem. Exactly like Ruth, I can tell you many other examples. For example, you see, just we, just, uh, Jean was talking about the Good Friday in five, five days' time. Did Jesus run away? Jesus didn't run away. Jesus knew that I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be hung in this cross. He had an option. He's a son of God. He had an option to run away, but he didn't run away. He was there. If only he would have run away. You can imagine that you and I won't be here this morning sitting in the house of God. Jesus didn't run away. He was there so that we all could have, we all are saved today. Exactly the similar way. If you don't run away from your problem, there is a huge blessing waiting to come. It can be any responsibility. It can be a person. It can be any other situation. It can be a bad thing. I know some of my students who are depressed. They are depressed because they can't score well in their exams. They can't understand certain things. They are, they are afraid of facing the examination. They are afraid of facing the examination. I know one particular student who even went to drugs because he couldn't face the examination, because he was not good at examination. He's scared. If I go back to my house, my parents are going to kill me. How do I face a problem? So he was trying to run away from the problem by having drugs. But I just want to make you all aware that, you know, when we run away from problems, it's only a temporary relief. You're not going to get relieved permanently. But if you stay there, you overcome the problem, you are winning the problem, you're becoming stronger, permanently you are healed. You are going forward. You cannot win the battle by running away. You have to face the battle, fight the battle, only then you win the battle. Yeah. David knew that. Yeah. David knew that. He knew that Goliath was in front of him. If he ran away, he's not going to win the battle. David stood firm and he, he went, went ahead and then he killed Goliath. Sometimes you always, we forget that, you know, after the boundary of fear is victory. Many of us are always circle in that fear. Oh, what if he thinks that way? What if he, she thinks that way? What if my prestige, you know, what if my status, we all think about those things and we just try to run away from the problems. Just like how I did previously, running away from problems. I used to run away from responsibilities. When, when there's responsibility, I can't, I can't take it. I don't know what to do. But now, I can boldly tell you that God is with me. When there is a responsibility, I take it as a chance for me becoming stronger. Because I know that after this lies victory. If I cross this problem, there is victory. I don't know how many of you know about Arthur Ashe. He, is, uh, he was one of the famous Wimbledon stars, Arthur Ashe. Now, Arthur Ashe was diagnosed with uh, cancer. Not cancer, sorry. He was diagnosed with AIDS because of a wrong transfusion of blood when he was doing a heart surgery. People from all over the world, were, they were sending him wishes, greeting him, and then praying for him. And one of the letters, what he received was, it, it read like this. Why among all people, you, God chose you to go through this problem? You know what Arthur Ashe replied back? Arthur Ashe replied back telling that, see, five million people start to play tennis. He is a tennis player, by the way. Around, around 500,000 make it to the, the circuit, out of which around, say, 5,000 enter the Grand Slam. Of all, then eventually, there are only four players in the semifinal. Eventually, it's only one person who wins the title. And when I'm standing there holding the Wimbledon Cup, did I ask God, why me? And now, why should I ask now to God that, why me? I will accept it. Because I know there is something beautiful beyond this. 
That was the reply Arthur Ashe told. So we all, I just encourage you all that we have to come to that divine exchange. You know, the place you have the problem, you stand there, wait for God, then you trade your problems with God. You trade your problems for blessings. That divine exchange is something that, which I'm always looking for. You stand there, trade your problems, trade your worries, trade your trials. And this is a secret that I'm telling you today. Because this, this problem which you are going through is allowed by God. Do you think God doesn't know that? What are we going through? I mean, things which you run away from. God knows that. God knows that he is allowing that into your life in that particular point of life. So that means there is a plan. There is a divine plan from God when God allows that problem. But if we start running away from the problem, his plan is not executed there. I always know that secret. So when you face a problem next time, please do think this. It's God's plan that I be here in this particular point of life. There's no point running away. If I run away, I'm not going to get the blessing. I'm here because it's God's plan. And I need to go through this plan so that I receive the blessing. I receive the prize. That is a secret I want to, I want to share with you all. Okay, one last point before I end this sharing here. We always listen to the song, It Is Well. It is well, it is well with my life. You know, you know the song, right? It is well, it is well. I'm out of tune, but that's the song. We always listen to the song. But you know the background of the song? The person who wrote the song, his name was Horatio Spafford, back in 19th century. When he wrote the song, I literally almost teared up reading his story. He was a very well-known lawyer in the U.S. And he was an elder of a Presbyterian church. He lost his two-year-old son to a fire accident. His business was lost. He had, apart from the two-year-old son, he had four daughters. And one fine day, the four daughters and his wife was on a cruise on a vacation. So Spafford actually wished them Okay, well, and you know, on the way, he receives the news that the ship actually met with an accident. The ship actually met with a shipwreck there. And the ship actually was washed away. There were three, four daughters there. All the four daughters washed away. Spafford's wife was there. Here, Spafford was actually expecting a news, something that either one of them is alive. Spafford receives a telegram 10 days later from his wife, saved alone. That is when he sat down to write the song. It is well with my soul. Respective of what happens, I'm okay. God has given me this. God has allowed this in my life. I'm okay with this. And today we sing that song almost one or other week around the world. So just want to encourage you all, my dear brothers and sisters, that you might be going through a problem, but just say, it is well. It is well, because God knows. God knows the problem I'm going through. I don't have to run away. Because if I'm running away, I'm not growing. It's not, it's not God's plan to run away. I want to conclude my message here. Let's all pray. Lord, we want to thank you, Father Lord, for allowing us to learn one more thing this morning, Father Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the problems we go through every day. We thank you, Father Lord, for allowing those problems in our life. Lord, we pray today that, Lord, give us this grace, Father Lord, that we may not run away from the problems, but we may face it. Two Corinthians chapter four verse seven to ten says that, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that 
this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are head pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus also be received or revealed in our body. We want to thank you for this morning, Father Lord. We want to give you all praise. Father Lord, we pray that, Father Lord, that you be with us in whatever troubles we go through and give us his grace that we may stay put and receive your blessings, Father Lord. In Jesus' most mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord.